Hello, LBS 400 students. Welcome to your early literacy concepts review video. This is video C, and this is one of many videos that we're using to review important concepts from our course and our textbook. And video C is all about print concepts. So I'm going to show you a book here. This book is called Julian is a Mermaid. And if you were in my kindergarten class and I was able to check your print concepts knowledge, I might hand you this book and ask you some questions like, can you show me the cover of the book? Maybe you would point like this. I might ask, can you show me the title of the book and see if you would be able to point to the title? I might ask you, can you show me the author of the book and see if you could point at the author? I might ask you to open the book to see if you knew how to open it and see if you knew that books go from left to right and you didn't just hold it sideways and open it in a funny direction. Um, and those are some very simple, kind of silly sounding questions, but that's what we're gonna talk about today with print concepts. And when we actually assess print concepts, what we're really looking for. So I'm gonna share my screen with you. Here we go. And like I said, we are in video C, which is print concepts. And this is covered quite a bit in your textbook by Cunningham and Allington. And so when we talk about print concepts, a lot of us think about books like we talked about, but on top of that, there's much more uh, to print concepts. So we're gonna talk about both. First off, like I already showed you a little bit of an example, is we might see teachers assessing concepts about print, meaning do students really understand how print works? Do they know what a book is and how it works? And a lot of this seems kind of silly, right? You might think, well, of course they know what a book is, but if they are in kindergarten and this is their first experience in school or even transitional kindergarten TK or preschool, they might not have had a lot of experience with books and possibly even first grade. Um, many people don't realize this, but kindergarten is not a mandate. So many kids don't start until first grade. So sometimes even your first graders have very little experience with actual books. And if they don't have a lot in their home, they might not know exactly how they work. So the big question is, do they know how books work? Do they know concepts about print and the function of it? And so this is an example of one of the assessments we might use in LBS 400 in your field work. Some of you may have already used this or seen it in classrooms. And these are some of the topics you might cover in this sort of an assessment. You would hand a student a book and ask them to point things out to you. Like, can you show me the title page? Where does the story begin? Where does the story uh, end? Where does uh, the first letter start? What's the first word? Can you point at it? Can you show me a letter? Can you find a capital letter? These are all the kinds of questions you might ask as you're going through this list uh, in this simple assessment. And this sort of an assessment will tell you how much experience that kid has had with books. Now, as we've talked about before, we, want, we don't wanna develop any kind of deficit thinking that if the kid has not had a lot of experience with books that they're not gonna be good at reading. Uh, they might gain it pretty quickly, but we might have to spend some time teaching them how to use a book properly. Also, a lot of children this day and age might have spent a lot of time looking at an iPad or a smartphone instead of using books. And many families are already doing a lot of reading in that format. So we might wanna think about maybe adding to this kind of an assessment and see if they know how to use digital tools and read digital print as well. Now, beyond the idea of a book, we want to think about, as I mentioned, technology. So you can see the first two pictures here. There's a typical parent reading to child that we think about when we think about how much of print or reading have you been exposed to. We see that parent reading to a child and we think that's what we expect, right? A lot of times that second picture in the yellow box, that's really a lot more the reality lately. We see a lot of kids looking at things on smartphones or tablets and they're very comfortable with that. I have a younger cousin who is older now, but when she was only three years old, she knew how to grab a smartphone and pull up her favorite YouTube videos and watch them. Um, and she didn't know how to read or write, but she knew how to find them and search them and click on them. So there is an exposure to print and there is a familiarity with print in that digital context for many students. But I'd like us to expand our understanding of print beyond that. Even if we're dealing with children who come from homes where there's not a lot of books or not a lot of technology, 
even in their community around them, where have they been exposed to print? So if we think about going to McDonald's, um, Walt Disney movies, Cheerios, those are things almost every kid has experience with, and those are print, that is text, those are letters in front of them, and students start to recognize that. Even a very young child knows when they drive by in the car that that's McDonald's when they see that sign and they might ask their parents, can we go get the McDonald's? And they don't read the word McDonald's, but they recognize those letters, right? So they are already exposed to print at a very young age. There's a lot of other types of print in our communities that some parents might be pointing out to them and some parents might not, but still, children are exposed to it and looking at it. So examples of this might be things in a grocery store um, and they may or may not be in English. A lot of our students, especially throughout the Los Angeles area, might be going to markets with their parents where the signs and the uh, products have labels in another language. They also would very likely see street signs and overpass signs and freeway signs. And maybe some parents will point that out. Uh, do you see that? word up there? Do you recognize the word Los Angeles? Do you know this letter right here? Uh, and so those are the kinds of common conversations that might happen that help students start to connect what print means, what those letters mean, and how to make sense of it. Another one that we often don't think about but still has meaning is street art and things like that. That's very common and it's part of a cultural norm in the Southern California areas and especially in the Los Angeles area. So there's a lot of text there. There's a lot of meaning behind that print. And so we might be even open to thinking that students are exposed to that at a young age and understand it. So there's a lot of access to print beyond the typical parents reading to you uh, that we might think about as teachers and how can we tap into that in our lessons. So uh, there's no additional videos in this uh, video that you need to check out before you post to Blackboard. So go ahead and go into Blackboard and click in the assignments folder, open the early literacy folder, and then look at the early literacy concept C discussion forum. Here is your prompt. You will start a thread and respond to this. We know that children learn about books when people read to them. What other ways might children be exposed to print in their homes and communities? How might a teacher utilize this in teaching early literacy? We talked about this quite a bit on the previous slide, but I want you to be creative and think about your community, think about the schools you've been working in, think about what you see around you, and how might you tap into that as a teacher? What kinds of activities could you do? What kinds of questions could you ask in class? What kind of pictures could you show to get them to connect with that print that they have already experienced? Go ahead and log in and respond to the discussion board, create a thread, and for three points with a well-constructed post and one point for each reply that you give to a classmate. Have fun, good luck, thank you for your time, and keep up all the hard work.